the light from above, the light of the Spirit inside of us, so that all the people can see that we have the Spirit of the Lord living within us. When we begin our worship, we ask God as the light to come into this sanctuary and to illuminate the scripture and the songs and all that we do in worship of our Lord. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Corby Johnson, and it is my pleasure to live here in Safford and to be a part of the Sidewalk Sunday School and a part of this church. I'm so glad that you're here today, and I hope that our worship and our song and our being together enlivens our hearts and binds us together as a church family. Let's begin our time together with the song, In Christ Alone. It's in the Green Book, hymn 3105. And we're going to sing 1, 2, and 4. Thank you for handing out technology. Our um, video projector has died, a horrible death. So I can see the words over here in the back, but you can't. So if you use your book, that's wonderful. Know that decisions are being made about what is going to happen with our technology. update. And yes, and so uh, we're excited about that. Let's see, 305. One, two. I 
I wanted to just read a line from the song that we just sang. Because I think that a lot of times we can feel pretty darn unlovable. Sometimes we feel like we're alone, that nobody understands us, that nobody's there for us. Um, sometimes life is just taking a turn that we did not expect. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled and striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme or plan can ever pluck me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Hmm. Amen. Amen. We need to hear those things, don't we? We need to hear that we are safe and that we are loved and that God has a plan in our hearts, a plan for here and a plan for there. <clears throat> I'm going to call Ed Hunter to the stand, and he is going to help us with our call to worship. Did you all have that in your hand now? Yes, okay. Thank you. Would you stand and join with me in the call to worship? And that's why we're here. Welcome, welcome in. Here we find a song for our souls and healing for our wounds. Welcome home. Here we find children's laughter that chases Come home.
time at the steps. Who would like to come up for time of the, at the steps? It doesn't matter how young or old you are. You can come and join us. We have two things going on at time of the steps today. We have a, a lesson, and then we have a video. And some songs. Right, wrapped up. Oh, are we? Are we singing first? Okay. <clears throat> Yay, you look handsome today. So, <clears throat> there's a saying in the adult world. You can't judge a book by its cover. Right? So which book would you all like to read? What about you? Which one looks most interesting to you? The colorful one or the one with mostly black? Okay, pretend it's not what it is. <laughs> <clears throat> this one to me just really speaks volumes because it's colorful and it looks like a lot of fun, but, uh-oh, Uh, this one might not look as much fun to kids, but it is full of stories. Stories that tell about uh, Jesus and the disciples. Stories that tell about people being banished or exiled. You have to go. Go now. Get out of here. And then... After a time, they or a divided United States. Sometimes we have that, don't we? Sometimes half the people think this is the best thing, and the other half think, no, this is the best thing. And it can divide us instead of bringing us together. So there in this book that might not look as much fun, but it is an amazing book. And this one, I hope that by the end of our Sunday School Sidewalk Sunday, of us doing fun things. Yeah. Mm hmm Where? One verse. We got the joy. We all know it. It'll take you right back to Vacation Bible School. <coughs> Eleven. Eleven. Joy, 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 joy down in my heart.
Okay. Yeah, we take adults at Sidewalk Sunday School too because we have an awful lot of fun together. So it doesn't matter how young or old you are. This is my friend Ed Hunter, and he's going to read our scripture for us today. This is 1 Samuel 17. It's about David. David has never seen a place. The Philistine army is spread out across the battlefield, ready for action. A sea of breastplates, helmets, leather, and Goliath, their champion. Mighty legs rooted to like powerful tree trunks. Goliath, Philistine army, and the shot thing is working. The soldiers of Judah not even saw that miserable excuse for a king. The one who steps forward at last is an odd choice. His name is a shepherd who is the son of a shepherd. A nobody. Saul had offered to loan David offered armor, and at first David him up on it. But when he saw how it hung down awkwardly from his much smaller body, David cast it aside. Only the homespun tunic of a shepherd. The only weapon that hangs from his hand is a strap with a pouch at one end, designed to hold a great army. Anybody under 20? Remember, it's a great story, isn't it? <clears throat> Sometimes we forget about these great stories that are stuck in the middle of a chapter in the Bible. Sometimes we think that these stories really don't have much to do with us. They are pff, what happened thousands of years ago. And yet, we have all been in a situation at one time or another. Now, we may not have had a sling and some stones, but we all have a tongue and a fist to shake. After Saul ridiculing him for his age and his weight and his height. David reaches into his shoulder bag and pulls out one of five river rocks that he's chosen from the dry stream bed. And he places one of them into his sling. Now he has used this sling repeatedly in his business because any threat that came toward his sheep, it was up to him to take care of it. He didn't have a bunch of adults around him to do what he could do himself. They trusted him. He had gotten really good at what he did, and they knew that he loved his sheep and he would protect the sheep. But here comes Goliath, bigger than life. He is slowly lumbering 
toward David. As he gets closer and closer, higher and higher, from the tips of his toes to the And this just wasn't any old giant. This guy was not nice. He wanted to take everything away from people. He wanted to make sure and that they had <clears throat> Goliath is raging. He's shaking his fist and his booming voice is demeaning David. What do you think you're going to do with that little stone and a sling? I am Goliath. I am the strongest and I am the meanest. And I'll take you, David. Well, that doesn't shake David. I, I, I don't know. I've never had this experience before, but I would think that my knees might be knocking a little bit, that my hands might be shaking as I grabbed that and a stone. But instead of turning, David, in one slick motion, puts a stone in his sling. And right in the giant's direction, he moves closer, and he swings the sling around his head, and screaming like a banshee, he starts running toward or before Goliath. He did this before Goliath could even figure out what in the world was happening. All of a sudden, David snaps his wrist and sends a stone hurling toward Goliath, toward his enemy, toward the one that he needed to fall. in the forehead and the ground shook as he fell to the ground. One well, one stone and a God of wonders who can take any one of us at any time and lead us toward doing great things. Our God is an amazing God. It turns out that that gangly teenager that was ridiculed by the giant had been working as that shepherd for years, and he knew a thing or two about protecting the weak. Sheep have no way of protecting themselves other than maybe a kick <laughs> from their back leg. Not too terrifying. David has been a caretaker of these sheep, and he has protected them from robbers and from wild beasts. He has protected them by moving them from one spot to another so they had enough to eat, enough to graze, and keeping them close to the still waters and the rambling brooks so they'd have water for life. David might have looked like a <clears throat> comic figure, I'd say, clad in Saul's oversized armor, holding a sword he barely knew how to hold, a sword that was heavy, a sword that was made for a large man. But he shed that protection of the armor and the sword, and he put his belief in God. God put that sling in David's hand, and the sling with one stone and its master's protection, it became a deadly weapon. 
Goliath was more of a sword and javelin guy, but his armor is heavy, and he cannot evade the stones that David is flying toward him. A sling is quiet. It's light, easy to carry, and it can kill before any other weapon is in range. That's really something, isn't it? In David's moment of crisis, he did not turn tail and run. He did not scatter his sheep. If you had those times when everything fell into place, there was a crisis at hand, but you knew exactly what to do. And sometimes the best thing is to turn tail and run, right? Sometimes you can stand and hold your ground. If you get into a position like this that is trying to hurt you, whether it's verbal or physical or t- as whatever happens unfolds. We have so many wonderful stories like this in the Bible that we think the Old Testament might be moldy and oldy and we don't really doesn't to us, but it does matter to us, and it can teach us things that maybe we've forgotten. The power of God in us and around us, just like David did. The Old Testament wasn't the only time God showed up. He wants us to be safe, and he wants us to be happy, and he wants us to have a good life and surround ourselves with people of like mind that love the Lord as well. Let us pray. Creator God, maker of dancing stars and awesome rainbows, sender of gentle breezes and swirling winds, find the lost chances and mender of broken dreams. You bless us with beauty, and you grace us with your understanding. You know us inside and out. When our hearts sigh with griefs too large for us to carry, you carry our sorrow. An angry stream, you listen to our pain and calm us within. When doubt snares us like When hope dwindles to a thin strand, you uplift us and show us your mighty hand leading us toward new life. You know our comings and goings. You know when we fail and you know when we succeed. The deepest longings of our hearts. Through it all, your love surrounds us, embraces us, sustains us in the stillness let us abide with Christ in your Amen Join our voices together. We'll be using the little green book again. The song is called Creation Sings 30 
are a praying people in this church. And what a joy, what a joy to pray for each other, for this church, and for the world, for everything that God has created was created good. So as we um, begin to pray, you are welcome to stand Raise your hand, or are there prayer cards? Yeah, there are prayer cards in the pew, so if you're not quite comfortable standing up and saying something, you can go ahead and write your prayer. On it, put your name at the bottom. What are some of the things that we need to pray for. Monica? Nope. Hello? I could have used my teacher voice. Um, my friend Mary had to have a heart ablation. We've been friends since we met in the basement of the English building at Western New Mexico, no, Western Michigan University many, many years ago. And she's my travel companion. I had people pray for the success, and she is home and hopefully doing well again. But I would appreciate continued prayers for her. She's had heart problems forever, and I want to do more traveling with her. So in your prayers. Lord Almighty, we lift Mary up to you today. Uh, she's a Methodist, but that was all that we had at that time. I love the Baptist churches. And uh, she did it for a reason. 
because she had been quite sick and she, being a nurse, knew that it was serious and she wanted me to have some, some spiritual background. So I went there and uh, sure enough, a month later my mother died. But she had taken care of me at that time. You probably already know. God is in our lives. And when you get to be 86, you can look back and you can, you can see that. Well, she left me. But in that small Baptist church, I met. <laughs> and we went steady for five years before, before we got married 66 years ago. So that adds up to about 71 years that God has provided me with this blessing tomorrow. Thank you, happy anniversary. <clears throat> We're glad you're both here. Debbie. Good morning. Good morning, Debbie. I feel good. Yay. Anyways, um, my little sister, she lives in Benson. She's got a job working up in uh, Oro Valley. Uh, she goes up there and she works 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Coming back, there was a horrible accident on, Mar on Marsh Street or whatever. Yeah, uh, off of I-10. Mm -hmm. And it was nighttime and she was deathly afraid. So we sat there and we I was home, of course, and she was in her car. I told her, lock your doors. <laughs> and I says, let's pray. And l less than 10 minutes, she was coming home. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Yes. Nothing happened. Whatever happened to the semi that was on fire, uh, they g were able to fix or do whatever they needed, and they mm -hmm. let the traffic go by. So praise God that she made it home safe. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Our friend Steve, who has moved to Surprise, has contacted COVID. So please keep. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to ask and remind that everybody get this little black book from their pew and sign in, especially when we have so many wonderful people here today. We'd like to be able to contact new people who might be thinking about joining us or find out if anyone has any needs. So just this little book. There's one on every pew. Thank you. Thank you. And we're thankful also for the parental support that you entrust your children with us and their spiritual development. Watch them grow and learn the songs. And um, a couple weeks ago, I was going to start a story, and they said, oh, we know this one. Yes, and it was a good one. <laughs> So, Carolee. Um, today at 11.30, we will meet in the fellowship hall for those who would like to join in on the Thanksgiving dinner that we're having. If you haven't signed up to do a dish, it doesn't matter. Just come.
bring family and friends and community people that you might know that might need a meal. We'd be grateful to have you. We've got lot. We'll have lots of food, and it would be really sit with the right same people that you always sit <laughs> with. Find somebody new to, to find out about them, to invite them to other things that the church will be having, yeah. and to maybe make a new friend. Nice. Yeah, when Ed was talking about the Baptist church, and things that happened years and years ago. I want us all to be thankful. Judy and I spent 20 years in Barrow, Alaska. They, the sun set two days ago. They will not see it until January 18th. The Presbyterian Catholics, um, the Mormons in Barrow, uh, and all over the world, we, we're, we're all in the same um, uh, we're, we're all on the same team. So be thankful for what we have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One of the interesting things I saw in Alaska was um, all of the pine trees, you know, pine trees have the branches. None of the branches started until about 14 feet in the air. And we thought, what is, that's crazy. What's going on there? Well, all the animals have to eat something, right? And so as the snow piles, there's no wind. The snow just falls. So as the snow piles, they eat the next branch and eat the next branch. <laughs> Fun fact. Hi. Um, I haven't attended for a while because I've been in Chandler staying with my son and then with my daughter. And I got back last night, kind of late, and I got up this morning and I thought, well, I should go to church. And then I thought, no, I'm tired. <laughs> I don't have my hair done. I don't, you know, I don't feel like it's cold, and, you know, all this <laughs> stuff, you know. And so anyway, I was playing this little word game that I play on my phone. And it's where you come up with words, you know, they give you the letters and you fill in anyway. The words kept coming up like evil, litany, uh, let's see, um, God, <laughs> amen, holy. I mean, all those words kept coming up on my game, and I finally said, all right, I get it, I get it. <laughs> so I came this morning, and here's Ed reading the words, Welcome home. God has been expecting you. <laughs> the candles are lit and the door is open, and I'm so thankful that I came. So it's so good to Yay. see all of you. <laughs> what a joy. I'm blessed. Our, my youngest son, Patrick, who lives in Tucson and works for Raytheon, and has, a park, has had Parkinson's diagnosed for over eight and a half years. But he's with us for 10 days. So we're going to spend Thanksgiving in Thatcher with my sons and my sister and friends. And I'm just so thankful because he's doing so very, very well. Yeah, oh, Mr. Spinning? Sure. A song of your choice. Oh, we did that one. Sure. Okay. Yep. We okay. So we have um, we have a song to sing before your going out song, if that's all right. I think it's one that you will most likely all know, and it goes like this.
beautiful, beautiful. And I like the hand signs. That was fun. Do we have another song you said you wanted to sing? Come on up. Oh, okay. Winnell, can we do We Are One in the Spirit? Do you know what book it's in? We'll figure it out. Did you find it? I think it's in the red book, actually. Oh, tw- dress. That was fun. We do have places for anybody who wants to come and share this wonderful group of young people. We, we have 28 or 30 right now um, that are signed up and come. It gets a little loud sometimes. We use the basketball court to kind of run off some of that energy from the day. And uh, we always have a good snack and a Bible story and a craft and singing, and you know what? Just wonderful adults that love the kids and that the kids love us back. And that's a delight. Kelly? Thank you, Kelly. And I'm going to share, I have a very similar experience. My family did not go to church. And, but all my neighbors went to church. They went to the Lutheran church and the Catholic church and the Baptist church and the Presbyterian church. And they invited me all the time. Well, the Presbyterian church had an after-school kids club, and so I went. And the Baptists, they had amazing ice cream socials, and I went. And the Lutherans had vacation Bible school, and I went. And the Lord just kept building me up and building me up. And I know that the Lord can do that for you and for your family, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren because faith is a generational joy. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, Lord, as we begin to think about what's going to happen next in our lives as we leave this building. May the God of all hope open your eyes. May your God of all peace still your anxious mind. May your God of all love fill your heart to fullness beyond all measure. 
And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you.